Hello everybody and welcome to part 8 of our Flask and Python web development video series. In this video we're going to be talking about our content management system that we're going to create. It's going to be completely custom and basically to suit my needs but you can probably tweak this to suit a lot of needs and what I like most about at least this system is it doesn't use very much RAM. It keeps processing extremely low and I like that. So anyways it keeps web hosting cheap. And so let's go ahead and get started. So we've got this dashboard, we've got the tabs, they work, that's great. But we know that to, to display the content, it might be kind of hard, especially if we want to change things later on. Or maybe what if <clears throat> in our content management system, like for me, for example, I knew that I wanted to, okay, we know we need the topics in the content management system. So this is, a content management system is just a term that we give to describe a system that manages your content. So how are we going to deliver content in a dynamic fashion to the user? So, or how are we going to kind of organize the stuff of our website? And you have to kind of, initially, you think that you know you how you want to do it, but as time changes, you maybe you want to add to the CMS, okay? Or maybe you want to change the CMS, or you're gonna certainly add content, okay? So you have to kind of think about these changes and at least for me, I knew, okay, the CMS needs to organize via the title, the grant, well, first, the, the main topic that it goes under, so basics, web development, data analysis. Okay, so you've got that. Then you've got uh, the topic itself, uh, so the, the part in the tutorial, and that will be basically organized by title. And then you've got a link to that, so what will be the URL path to this? And luckily, as I'll show you guys, you can actually have in the URLs for your website, you can actually have, so right now you, we write it out, but that's not the only way you can do it. You can actually put variables in there and you can put variables in there and you can do all kinds of really cool stuff and some neat hacks because normally if you have an app root and the URL looks about the same or is the same, you will get an error, but you can actually trick it and send it to basically to two different or to the exact same, you can have the exact same URLs and you can do a lot of really interesting uh, hacky stuff with it. Maybe we'll talk about that way at the end. Uh, but anyway, you can put variables in here and you can do a lot of cool magic. So uh, anyway, I knew that, but then I also knew maybe down the line I might want to add something like tags. So if I have a search bar and someone says, okay, how do you plot matplotlib or how do you do, how you read from a CSV or something. I wanted people to be able to search and find it and I didn't want to use like a Google search bar or something like that. So anyway, uh, I knew that I maybe I would add that later. So what I thought was the best way at, at least to, in, to a basic degree would be to make a, just a dictionary, okay? So a Python dictionary and you reference, you know, part one, part, you know, so you reference the, the key and you've got the values and the values can be a list and you reference the number of the list and you can always make the list longer as long as you're not using like say you're referencing the negative first -th element that might cause trouble but as long as you're referencing the positive elements then you're totally fine and as long as you're not doing crazy slicing uh, but you should be able to even get away with slicing so long as you're reading the you know left hand side but anyway that's how we're going to do it so let's go ahead and get started so we've got dashboard we've got this we want it to be custom how do we do it well the way that I did it or have it at least at the moment things might change but I have a file that's literally called uh, content underscore management dot pi and you're gonna want to probably let's just add a space and save it so it shows up here as time goes on you're gonna want to like you know you can you could put everything in the init.py file and I, I, people get angry at me because I stuff a lot of stuff into a single file and that just really irks people. I get it, I understand, I, it doesn't irk me as much, but when you're making a website, it's really easy for the init.py file to get well over thousands of lines, um, even like 20,000 lines is not uncommon. Like you're gonna probably write about 20,000 lines of Python code for, uh, you know, a basic to medium-ish kind of website with a lot of, you know, custom dynamic stuff. That's a lot of lines to contain all within the init.py file. So, oops, I didn't mean to open up a second one. So, anyway, you to an extent, you want to separate these. I knew content management was going to be a really long uh, dictionary, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, make its own file. So, anyway, content management, it's going to be real simple. It's going to have 
just this this uh, dictionary for now at least and so I'm going to define this function of content no parameters and it is going to have within it a topic underscore dict and it's going to be a dictionary so let me move this over and in fact let me make the font size a bit bigger so everyone can see so we've got topic dict it's an empty dict for now but let's say okay for our first key we have basics with a capital B colon and basics is going to be a list of values but it's actually going to be more than that it's going to be, have to be a list of lists for the very for the following reasons so basics let's say the first tutorial let me uh, pull up pythonprogramming.net so let's go start learning and then here's the basics we know we've got okay the first uh, title is python introduction and but we have like obviously this here but uh, in fact let's go if statement let's just use if statement so the other one's a little different anyway uh, if statement uh, so well I will start with Python I hate to like start with if statement on this video anyways whatever we'll just say it's the title is introduction to Python programming so you have uh, the first element here is introduction to Python we'll just say Python for now uh, so that's the title and then you're gonna need the link to that which will be basically this right here so you'd have that's the title that's the link let's just full screen this um, and then uh, that's basically it as far as uh, the first let's say tutorial but then let's say we've got another tutorial within the basics so you have that you've got uh, let's go to the next one next tutorial print function and strings and here's another reason why you want a content management system what if for example uh, we go here we go to basics and we see that first we had in, we have installing modules that's an original that came with the series in order but then as time went on pip is now the preferred way to install a package I needed to inject that tutorial after installing modules if this was all hard coded not only would I have to um, you know basically stuff this one in there in a pretty hacky manner also at the bottom of every tutorial we've got buttons that lead to the next tutorial and these buttons are actually generated dynamically so the link that they reference is dynamic and then the title on the button is dynamic and so that le lets me basically just all I need to do is edit this topic dictionary and uh, add one thing into the init.py file and that's it that's the only change I have to make it's very simple and so and then same thing if I want to change the title I can just go to the topic dict change the title if I want to change the URL I just come in here to this content management file change the URL everything else is done so you don't have to worry about you know normally if you change the URL you'd have to go back you have to go to the URL referenced in the init.py file change that URL you have to go to every button that references change that URL you'd have to go to basically anything that references that so in a lot of tutorials I might say hey check out this tutorial for more information on how to do XYZ uh, that would just it would just be a huge mess anytime you wanted to change something so it's really important that you have some sort of content management system anyway moving on intro to Python the next thing we have is uh, let's just go back to intro to, okay so intro that's this and then we have print functions and strings so we have that so now we'll, we'll just add that one so we'll say okay we've got uh, print functions and strings and then comma and then the URL I'll just uh, ignore this and completed or the question completed that's that's for the actual tracking here uh, but we'll just ignore that for now but the URL here is just this URL so it's Python tutorial print function strings so copy paste done uh, let's add one more and then we'll be we'll be done with uh, this um, example but anyway so then we've got math basics with Python 3 let's just copy and paste that'll be faster huh uh whoops what have i done okay so brackets comma this math basics with python 3 and then we'll take this url copy paste okay so that's the basics then again now if you'll this closes off the values to the basics key so now if we wanted to add another topic we would just add comma enter and then what would be the name of that next topic I think we called we did web dev so web dev let's just say and it will equal 
something. For now, it's an empty list. We'll come back to that. So content management, it's a Python file. Every time we edit a Python file, what do we need to do? We need to restart Apache. We're going to come to that in a moment. But for now, let's just save the content management. And we'll move this over here for now, minimize this. And then we're going to come right here. And at the top of our init.py init file, we want to import this content management. And we want to import content especially. Um, and actually, let's make this content with a capital C. Moving this back over. Now we're going to say, since it's in, the, in our directory, we just have to say from content underscore management import content. Then uh, what we want to do near the top of our script is basically, we'll just do it right here. We'll say topic underscore dict equals content. And let's save that. We forgot to actually return content. So we'll come back over here. And this content function needs to do something. And so it's going to literally just return topic underscore dict. Save that. Move it over. Move that up. Now we've got topic dict. Now we need some way to transmit topic dict to our actual HTML so it'll list it out here. How do we do that? Well, we'll come down to dashboard, render template, and then in render template, you can add some more parameters here. And one of the parameters, well, the rest of them are just going to be parameters, okay, or values. So for example, we can say topic underscore dict equals topic underscore dict. Now, I always write it this way to keep um, you know, variable names and objects, which you can pass. You can pass all kinds of stuff. It's really cool, all the stuff you can pass through. Uh, I always try to keep the names identical. Uh, but just, for the, just so we're clear, this is corresponding to this. This is what we're going to call it in the HTML file. So we could say gv that. And that's totally acceptable. It's just in our HTML file, we reference it as gh, ghg, okay? But I don't like to do that. I like to keep the names the same. It's really easy that way when you're looking through your HTML, you recognize, okay, that's that variable that came from that function, and you're not changing the variables around. It's just a smart idea. So that's it. That's all you have to do to pass variables. Uh, now we'll, we'll restart Apache. Hopefully we don't have any errors. Uh, we'll see. Sometimes you might have an error in the import or something like that. Uh, where are we? I'm not sure where the original um, dev thing was. I've got too many screens. Sometimes when you have this many screens, you just get lost. <laughs> anyway, here's the page. We'll click on Start Learning. We head to Dashboard. It's the same page as before, but we have actually successfully passed through Topic Dict. So let's go to here. And what we'll do now is we can do the following. First of all, we could just simply do this. So that's the syntax for a, a variable is just two curly braces. And we can literally do topic underscore dict. Save that and come back over to this. Let's refresh. And here you actually see we have our topic dict. It's right here. I think that's pretty cool. But what's even cooler is that we can iterate now through the topic dict. So for example, uh, we'll just use literally a Python for loop. So you've got, let's say, an unordered list. That's totally fine. What do we do? Well, we could say the following. So we need logic. So this is how we do logic. And we know we want it to be a for loop. So we'll say for, uh, we'll say for t as in topic, for t in uh, topic dict. And this is in the basics tab, so we know we want it to be basics. Again, this is Python code. For t and topic basics, uh, so that's going to be for every topic. And keep in mind, t is going to correspond to this right here, this whole this list. I'm having a really hard time highlighting this list. But it's going to correspond to the list, right? The list element is, so you've got, you. this is, You've got element zero, which is the title, and then you've got the element one, which is our link. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so uh, what we'll do for T and topic, okay. Uh, let's get rid of this, and then we'll go down here. Let's end this for loop before we forget. So end four, and then you've already started the, the unordered list, right? So now we just need to add list item. 
So li slash li. And then we know we want it to be a link. So what we're going to do is a href equals, and then close off the a. So the we want the title in between this. So the title was basically t0, right? And then the link to it was going to be t1. But we need our variables. So you do the little curly braces curly brace and now you've got links and it's completely dynamic if we added a changed content uh, this content management file here it is if we change that it would that would change this list on here we wouldn't need to add anything more to that list or anything like that the links work and the title works so let's go ahead and save we've saved um, I don't think we'd have to restart again but we will just just, uh, just in case let's refresh and now you can see that we actually have our list here, introduction to Python, print strings, and all that. And we can also see that if you look down at the bottom where it'll say the URL, we can click on it, it's gonna be a 404. But um, you can see that it did indeed link us where we wanted to go. We've got the title, all of that. So I'm gonna cut off the video here. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about the content dictionary. We'll add, it, we'll at least add some web dev stuff and some data analysis stuff just to populate it. We'll make the pages that we need. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we still need to talk about, we'll talk about 404s, Air 500s, login, that kind of stuff. And we still got to talk about the users and all that. But hopefully you, you're starting to see how simple making websites really can be, especially when we get to use Python because that's the, the best language ever. So anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.